Hey guys, today we're troubleshooting a boost control issue on a second generation DSM. I had this car on the dyno yesterday, and to start things off, I always try to work from low RPM to high RPM, kind of bringing power up gradually to make sure everything looks right before you just romp on the car and give it everything. When doing so, boost on this car never plateaued anywhere. And it is an aftermarket turbo. This one is an FP Red with an aftermarket boost control solenoid over here. So it's not gonna behave as a factory car and we wanna make sure it's going to behave as it's supposed to. So I'm gonna show you how the system works and we're gonna do a little bit of a test. Component down here is the turbocharger. This is the compressor side that creates the positive pressure in the intake manifold. And then this is the turbine side that feeds down into a turbine wheel inside of this housing. So how this works is exhaust gases come from the ports. They spin the turbine wheel, which spins the impeller on the in induction side. And because of that, that compresses air and then you have boost. When the compressor side of the turbocharger is spinning fast enough to achieve whatever boost pressure you're looking to have, you need to bleed the exhaust energy out away from the turbine wheel. That way the turbine doesn't spin any faster and create any additional boost in the intake manifold. That's accomplished through what's called a wastegate. On this turbocharger, it's an internal wastegate, so there's a flapper valve inside of that turbocharger that opens up and allows some of the exhaust to bypass the turbine out of this passage right here. In order to control the wastegate and decide when it opens and when it closes, we have what's called a wastegate actuator. That's this little shiny piece over here. There is a spring in here, and then there is a sealed passage on this side that will put a pressure against the spring to force this lever this direction, opening the valve for the wastegate. I'm going to hit it with some air and you'll be able to actually see it move and see the valve open. Alright, now let me show you how the boost controller is plumbed on this vehicle. On the outlet side of the turbocharger, there is a barbed fitting that is supplying positive pressure when in boost to the bottom port on the boost controller. The side port of the boost controller runs over here to the waste gate. And when boost pressure enters this sealed, sealed passage in enough quantity, the waste gate actuator will open the waste gate. I drew you all some pictures. Over here, we have a cross section view of what the boost controller looks like on the inside. It'll show you kind of how it works. And over here, we have the turbocharger. Again, we have the pressure port feeding the bottom of the boost controller and the output port going to the wastegate. Now when this wastegate gets to a certain pressure, regardless of the source that we're getting our boost from, it'll still open the wastegate. So it's a fixed amount of pressure that it's going to need to overcome the spring that's inside of it to open the valve. The simplest implementation of boost control would be to run wastegate only. So that would be the pressure port over here directly feeding the waste gate and as soon as the spring pressure of the waste gate was overcome by boost pressure the waste gate would open and boost would stabilize this is a really simple boost controller as well it's got a fitting on the bottom that you hook a hose to and another barbed fitting on the side of it that you hook another hose to there is a bleed drilled into this so that we have good waste gate response and down inside we have a tapered passage with a check ball of some sort. The check ball is preloaded by the tension of a spring that's pressed down on it by the screw on the top. So the looser the screw on the top, the less tension and preload we have on the spring, the less pressure is on this ball. The tighter this fitting is tightened down, the more preload there will be on the spring and the more force it will take for boost pressure to overcome this check ball and actually get to the wastegate. Additionally, some of the boost pressure will be lost in this passage due to the bleed. That adds an additional amount of boost that we have to achieve before we can actually get to the wastegate and open it up. A little bit of testing on the actual boost controller. I've got 10 PSI of pressure set up on the compressor. And over here, when we squeeze the trigger, we can hear some air rush out of the bypass. And if air is rushing past the bypass, that tells us that it's also bypassing the check valve. That means that the boost controller is not trying to necessarily regulate boost at this point. It's trying to allow the boost pressure to go to the wastegate 
to use the wastegates authority instead. So as I tighten this down and put more pressure on the check valve, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but the ball is jumping on the seat right now. And now if I tighten it a little more, the amount of air we have bypassing reduces still. At this point, no bypass air, which means the check valve is staying closed at this pressure. All right, now let's increase the pressure on the air compressor. And if everything is working correctly, we should again hear air bypassing at a little bleep port. All right, so that thing's working as it's supposed to. Just so that we can add a little bit of data to this, I used the adjuster on the air compressor to get our pressure level exactly where we release our preload on the wastegate spring. So again, see a little bit of movement there. Not actually opening it, but it's releasing the tension on the spring. And we found that at around 25 PSI. Now let's take the boost controller out of the system and let's see how much pressure it takes to release the preload. I've got the air hook directly up to the wastegate now. I haven't changed pressure at all. So hose is going down there to the wastegate actuator and watch. And you see that? Wastegate opened. Quite a bit more too at the same pressure. And if you didn't notice, the arm didn't return back to where it's supposed to either. My hand's off the tool. This is why we have the bleed port on the side of the wastegate side of the fitting. So watch. If I take this hose off, it jumps back to where it's supposed to be. I've got the compressor back at an indicated 18, 19 PSI. This is what I found was the minimum amount of pressure required to bypass the preload of the wastegate spring. So let's go back over to the wastegate actuator. And I'm going to try and get you in real close there to see it because it barely moves when you release the preload on the spring. And come on now, that'll work. Let's see if you can see it. Barely a little bit of movement. In this test, we've seen that the boost controller is functioning as it's supposed to. However, it does add a little bit to the minimum amount of boost that you can produce with a turbocharged setup just because of that air blade letting some boost pressure escape. At the end of the day, I don't necessarily think that the boost controller is the problem on this vehicle. We know it functions, and people have used this style of boost controller for decades now. So as long as it works, it's probably not the root cause of the issue. I do wonder, however, if maybe the wastegate is not opening all the way and allowing the turbine wheel to bleed off enough pressure. If that's the case, boost will continue to rise as engine RPMs rise. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. The next step would definitely be taking off the exhaust housing on the back of that turbocharger so that we can see what happens inside. Unfortunately, we don't have time to do that today, so gotta cut this video off short. There's a lot more to this topic than we can cover in a video, so by all means, if you have questions, leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.